Welcome to The Unbelievable Truth, the show where you may learn some things you'd rather not know. For instance, did you know that reindeers drink human urine? Which is going to really change what the kids put out for the reindeers next Christmas. <laughs> Playing tonight are Virginia Gay, <laughs> The Umbilical Brothers, Akma Saleh and Andrew Hansen. OK, here's how the game works. Each guest gives a talk that should be completely false, except for a few true facts which they try and sneak past the panel for points. The other guests have to try and spot what's true and buzz in. If they're right, they get a point, but if they're wrong, they lose one. OK, our first competitor is Andrew Hansen. His topic is koalas. <laughs> the Aboriginal word koala translates as, my God, that is one massive nose. <laughs> This explains why Aborigines use koala as a nickname for Julia Gillard. <laughs> the oldest known koala lived for 67 years, almost as long as Alf has been on Home and Away. Whoa, well, steady on, guys. I've only been here 66 years. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Alf. I think the oldest known koala has lived for 67 years. No, sorry, no. that is wrong. Uh, the average lifespan of a koala is about 10 years in the wild. Oh. All right, so you lose a point. Sorry, Virginia. Sorry. Continue, Andrew. Yeah. <clears throat> All koalas greedily slurp down two litres of water every day, pausing only for the occasional weird sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> as well as having six fingers on each hand, male koalas have two penises. Humbies, <laughs> what do you think is true there? Two penises, why not? Yeah. That is right, well done. Yay! Yeah. They have a bifurcated penis, which is kind of two penises at the end, which cleverly enough corresponds with a female koala's two lateral vaginas. <laughs> they never put the double penis on the little koala souvenirs, do they? No, no. They leave that off. <laughs> no. The umbies get a point, well done. <laughs> All right, continue, Andrew. Uh, <clears throat> the two penises are actually awful for the lady koala who's expected to use one of them in the regular way while holding onto the second for balance. <laughs> no wonder so many koalas become lesbians. <laughs> 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 now, the reason that the Wilderness Society dresses koalas is because they found people more willing to donate than when they used to dress as funnel web spiders. <laughs> <laughs> A koala eats four times its own body weight every day. It is truly the Matt Preston of the animal kingdom. <laughs> at least it is until it gets eaten by Matt Preston. <laughs> yes, Virginia? I reckon that's true, that the koala eats four times its body weight every day. No, it's actually, oh. it's actually much closer to say that Matt Preston eats koalas, actually. No, <laughs> you lose a point. Continue. All right. <laughs> if you want to try eating the same way that a koala eats, it's easy, you just need to invite your parents over and sample their droppings. 90% of people can't tell the difference between that and their dad's regular cooking. <laughs> the koala's anatomy is designed so that if you grasp both its ears and pull, the animal will tear into two precisely equal halves. <laughs> I'm half of you. I've got one of your penises. <laughs> Koalas sleep for at least 23 hours a day, which is why so many of them work for the government. True. <laughs> That's true, I knew that, because I do the same thing. <laughs> no, 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 no. Koalas sleep for approximately 18 hours oh, a day. Oh, 18. Oh. And then, the, you know, but I was I, thinking of the ones that sleep in. You mean teenage koalas? Yeah, yeah. Oh, teenage yeah, that's very really stupid. Koalas. But you know, what yeah. I particularly love about this is the reason they sleep 18 hours out of 24 is the evolutionary strategy to conserve their energy because the eucalypt leaf is so low in nutrients and energy value. Yes. So they actually can't get up any longer just because they only eat. Why don't you eat something else? Why don't you, why don't you eat some sweets and get up, you lazy bugger? <laughs> so you lose a point, by the way. Continue, yeah. Andrew. <clears throat> It's n oh, you'll like this, and you have to buzz quickly on this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's very quick. Yeah, that is quick. All right, Andrew, go. It's not true that it's not true that koalas are bears. I can't even figure that out myself. It's not true that it's not true. No, they're not bears. You lose a point. Sacked oh. in. Oh, 
Oh, you were so certain about that one <laughs> because you hadn't heard it yet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's like Christians. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, they're so certain about things they haven't seen. Yeah, yeah. You know, I grew up with that. You know, so I'm so sure. Have you seen it? No. no. <laughs> well, that's the end of Koalas. Hey! Thank you, Andrew. Andrew managed to smuggle two truths past the panel for two points, and they were koalas become lesbians. What? Yes, you missed that one. Yes. Uh, female koalas have been known to shun their male counterparts and engage in homosexuality. Uh, this only seems to occur predominantly when they're in captivity, just like in prisoner. <laughs> yeah. uh, koalas feed their droppings to the young. Several mammals eat their own droppings uh, or their offsprings, but only koalas feed them their droppings. There you go. And up next, Virginia Gay will tell us what's behind Ned Kelly's mask. Ned Kelly. Poet, astrophysicist, woman. <laughs> Truth and welcome to Virginia Gay. Virginia Gay is apparently in a show called Winners and Losers on, oh, Channel 7. Yes, it's a great show. Her topic is the infamous bush ranger, Ned Kelly. Ned Kelly. Poet, astrophysicist, woman. <laughs> yeah, I... Choose wisely, son. Choose wisely. <laughs> You said poet, and I was thinking Ned Kelly, he's got that, that famous quote, he said, such is life. Probably needed a second rhyming line. Yeah. Yeah. Hence poetry, but yeah. uh, he, such but is life. Nowadays that would pass as poetry, but no, he's not a poet. Nowadays. Such is life, touch my wife. Okay. <laughs> but, but was he a poet? Did he write poetry? No, he didn't write poetry right. at all. Yeah. Okay. All right. You lose point, Andrew, sorry about that. Continue, Virginia. Ned spent more than 65% of his short life in jail, 35% in bars and brothels, and 17% patently not learning percentages in high school. The iconic image of Ned's face mask, made almost entirely from melted down spoons from his family homestead, has spawned a million dollar industry. Yes, yeah, zombies? I reckon they probably did use spoons. Sally, no, the mask was forged with discarded parts of a plough beaten into shape over a log. You could use a plough as a spoon. No, you lose point. <laughs> Such is knife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, Nick Kelly inspired a whole lot of uh, women in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge industry. <laughs> if <laughs> only he'd patented it. Oh, if only. <laughs> he had no idea, poor Ned. <laughs> Homemade Ned Kelly helmet injuries account for over 200 hospital admissions every year. As a medical professional myself, I've seen the horror firsthand. These are for near suffocation, puncture wounds, or just getting irrevocably stuck. Yeah, why not? 200 a year? Why not? Why 200 not? people a year yeah. get Ned Kelly yeah. helmet injuries. Prove, prove that they've this, done. <coughs> you know, this is amazing, but Australians are not as stupid as you think, no. Yeah. <laughs> I they did it six times myself. In the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because most people who go to casualty, they, they've got things stuck in a different part of their... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not so much. A different slot. Yeah. <laughs> the swelling and suction formed when stuck in a Ned Kelly helmet can be overcome the same way you get a lid off a pickle jar. Hot water? A sharp tap, <laughs> but thorough lubrication is the most effective. <laughs> we put the helmet be. back on, Julian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah could, couldn't you have had a better looking patient? The artist Arthur Nolan frequently incorporated images of Kelly into his work. R. Kelly, <laughs> Kelly Clarkson, even Kelis once or twice, although the slight mispronunciation did mean that that particular milkshake singularly failed to bring the boys to the yard. <laughs> For many years, tourists who came to the Melbourne jail to marvel at their display of Ned Kelly's skull were actually looking at someone else's due to an embarrassing mix-up. Yes, yeah, zombies. I bet they were looking at somebody else's and it wasn't his skull. That is right. Well done. Yeah. 
At the Melbourne Jail, Ned Kelly's actual skull is still at large. Uh, the skull thought to be Kelly's actually belonged to Frederick Bailey Deeming, who is one of the suspects in the Jack the Ripper murder. So it was still, still an evil head of some sort. <laughs> Thank you, Virginia. <laughs> Virginia managed to smuggle zero truth past the panel for zero points. <laughs> Coming up next, Akmal Sala talks like an Egyptian about Egypt. What do you win anyway on the show? There's nothing. <laughs> What's the point? I'm, I lost the point. Oh my god, my life is over. <laughs>
right. The cricket started to say, I want to kill some leopard. Oh, nah, cricket's on. <laughs> now, uh, Egyptians, of course, as we know, are very, uh, very uh, in, 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 inventive. Check out the headwear they improvised during the revolution. <laughs> See, there's one. <laughs> I love, that's my favorite. Uh, that's bread. If you're going to take part in a revolution, you know, on your way to the revolution, just stop off at a bakery. <laughs> Because, you know, there's nothing that really protects you against rubber bullets than two bread rolls. <laughs> and, uh, but make sure you use real bread, because none of that, you know, gluten-free shit, because that'll... <laughs> that won't protect anyone. <laughs> so, uh, I hope you've learned something tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, so I'm gonna go back home. Go back home. <laughs> oh. See you, everyone. <laughs> That's where we live. Thank you, Akmal. Akmal managed to snuggle one truth past the panel, and it was. Egyptian pyramid builders really did get three beer breaks a day. They weren't slaves, they were free men, and it took 10,000 workers more than 30 years to build a single pyramid. The yeah. That's because they had so much beer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they were free people. Free people, I didn't know that. Yeah, they weren't no, they slaves, slaves, apparently. Technically, they didn't Ten call them slaves, but, you know, people who work at McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Free. <laughs> they're not, they're employees. <laughs> so there you go, three beer breaks today and uh, Artun. Well done, Akmal. Thank you very much. Up next, <laughs> up next, the Umbilical Brothers choose a topic with strings attached. It's puppets. Final guests are the Umbilical Brothers. Their topic is puppets. <laughs> the earliest practitioner of puppetry was the Greek god Zeus. <laughs> he used to shove his hands up the bums of humans to make them do what he wanted. <laughs> Figuratively, not literally. <laughs> 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 Sesame Street has 31 different virgins around the virgin. <laughs> Here we go. Sesame Street has 31 different versions around the world. In the Pakistani version, Oscar the Grouch is called Akhtar, and he lives in an oil barrel. <laughs> Yes, Virginia, what do you think is true? Well, I thought it was true until I saw the puppet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In a version, one of them is called Akhtar. There is a Pakistani version of Sesame Street, but there is no character called Akhtar who lives in an oil barrel. I apologise for that. Mm. Sorry. It's, it's ironic you got that wrong, because you are an Akhtar. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> you? OK. In Venezuela, he's known as Raimondo, and he lives in a trunk. <laughs> Let me out of here! Let me out of here! You grouch your last grouch, Raimondo! <laughs> Miss me! <laughs> what do you think is true? Something, uh, something makes me think that in Venezuela there is Raimondo! <laughs> the, the, the groucho! And is the thing that makes you think that, that your capacity to be wrong all the time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that helped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That helped me pinpoint. Continue. In China, he's called slightly disgruntled party member. <laughs> and he lives in a high rise on the outskirts of Beijing. <laughs> Let's see, it's, uh, it's that one right there. Help me, help me. Let's look at how the Muppets have evolved over the years. Fozzie Bear was first known as Fuzzy Hair. Waka waka waka! <laughs> Gonzo's original name was Snarl the Cigar Box Frackle. <laughs> was Gonzo once called the, the c c Box of Freckles or something? And it was right! Yeah. Gonzo's 
his original name before Gone to the Great was Snarl the Cigar Box Frackle. He first appeared in a 1970 TV special before graduating to The Muppet Show. So that is true. You, and you get a point, Andrew. That's even more unbelievable oh, true. Back. <laughs> Over the years, there have been the elbow puppets. Hello. The ear puppets. Hello. The face puppets. Hello. And the bum puppets, which we don't have time to show you tonight. Yes, Virginia, what do you think is true? Bum puppets. That is right, well what? done. <laughs> yes, there were bum puppets. Oh, God. It, there was an Australian performance group that claims to be the bum version of puppetry of the penis. Presumably they can only ever do hamburger. Yeah. <laughs> it began with a show in a pub in Tasmania, said a bum puppet, with painted faces on bums that ate pies. So Did there you go. That footage? Who's it? Where's no, that talent? Not footage! Yeah. I, want, I want to see Where's the actor. Stop. And foreigners think we have no culture in Australia. Oh. <laughs> Continue. Very few people realise that the original Thunderbirds were actually real actors. So convincing was their puppet acting. Their huge heads were due to their enormous intellect, which is typical for actors. Was something something faintly positive actors and I buzzed in. No, no. actors are idiots. We move on. <laughs> Thunderbirds was remade with puppets in Japan in the 70s as a martial arts movie called Master of Bird Thunder Action Team Techno Voyager. Let's go. Hiya! <laughs> 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 It was remade again in the 90s as Operation Desert Storm. Halt! Attention! <laughs> <laughs> it was so successful that they made a sequel in 2003 called Operation Iraqi Freedom. That was less successful. <laughs> and a bit long. <laughs> it's The most vicious and anti-social puppets are on children's television. A magician was put in hospital when he was attacked by cute English puppet Sooty. No Sooty, no! No Sooty! Sooty, no! Sooty! He's already dead! Thank you, I'm They managed to smuggle one truth past the panel, and that was... Magician Paul Daniels was taken to hospital last year after he was assaulted by beloved children's hand puppet Sooty. The article claims that uh, Daniels complained in the first take that the pizza hadn't hit him hard enough, so Sooty showed him in the next take. <laughs> All right, well, let's go to the results now for tonight's show. And in fourth place, on minus two points, it's Akmal. <laughs> It's the Umbilical Brothers! I have no idea how, but in second place on three points, it's Andrew Hansen. Which means in first place on four points, it's Virginia Girls! That is it for this week. Thank you to all of our guests tonight. They were all truly unbelievable, and that's the unbelievable truth. <laughs>